गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग सो आर देर एनी क्वेश्चन एनी बडी हैज एनी क्वेश्चन एनी डाउट I have a doubt in the assignment number three. Yeah. yeah. When we take iteration after finding the uh, tangent if 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 matrix, hmm. we take iteration first. So we have to find the del d at first iteration. So we have to know that the the value of the v transpose v t b at zero iteration. So for how the zero iteration value should be defined? You will take uh, either initial guess as a. CT equal to CE, no. Load, see the load you have to apply in steps. You cannot apply the full load at once. You have to divide into a number of steps. So for the first step, uh, uh, and not only that, till the elastic limit is elastic reached. Point. Yeah, the CT will be equal to CE, that elastic C. constant matrix. Okay, so up to yeah. the elastic limit. Yeah. Then the feed, then then the value of the feed will change when the elastic. And limit then uh, once the it reaches to elastoplastic region, then uh, C T will be different from C E. Ah, uh, so sir, since we have to apply the loads in a stepwise till last. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You cannot apply the the full load at once. No, you have to divide into number of steps. Even within the elastic limit, also, sir. within the elastic limit actually not required you can have uh, just in one step you can go to the elastic limit but uh, yes, or rather than doing that usually uh, we divide into a, you know the uniform step so is there would be some steps in elastic also but for in the elastic region it is not necessary you can go to a load step uh, directly re reaching to elastic limit okay. and uh, in the elastoplastic region sir uh, What would be the um, that load size like? Uh, in what step we should apply that load? See that yeah, total load you know you can divide into a uh, yeah, say uh, ten steps are like that. And sir, that that is load step should be equal to the number of iteration performed or? No no no, iterations are different from the steps, no. iterations are different from, and there are two kinds of iteration on global iteration which global runs iteration. over you no know, this kt and uh, load vector everything and other is local iteration at each gas point for finding out the stress you have to do the iterations for finding out the stresses at each gas point so there are two set of iteration one is the global iteration and one is the local iteration at each gas point thank you sir Yeah. Okay. So, are there any other questions, doubts? Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, I wanted to ask regarding the last uh, in the last we did that uh, mesh. How to how we did that mesh? Mm hmm. Regarding that one third point we wrote that uh, we define the mesh, do the modulation, and show. That is the free variation between the two points. Do not change the product department. Yeah. So the question is that maybe one can like uh, suppose uh, there are. I think uh, Pulkit, your voice is may not clear. A right? lot of uh, noise is coming. So I understand that probably you are asking the third point which I had written. Yes. So see, uh, because force response is. Mm, uh, computationally mm, uh, more time consuming compared to eigen value analysis so now we know the we, if we want to study the force response so we know the forcing function so for no either a uh, forcing function is a harmonic function so then you know the frequency r it is a general function of time or uh, numerical data tabular data graph whatever so you can do the fft of that uh, data and find out the 
omega max f that is maximum frequency uh, corresponding to a significant amplitude of the forcing function and then now you do the eigen value analysis and uh, while doing the eigen value analysis then you look for all the natural frequencies and corresponding modes till uh, you know the natural frequency equal to omega f max that is maximum forcing frequency and uh, now uh, so you, you may, may start with certain mass but then you are not sure whether the all uh, modes up to omega uh, all modes up uh, with natural frequency up to omega max f are converged or not so you do the mass refinement and when you do the mass refinement you have to make sure that all the modes up to having frequency up to omega f max are converged then that mess is used for the force response analysis for the time integration is that you were asking pulkit what is your question hello hello pulkit you are muted okay so then i think let me then start am i audible sir yeah uh, yes sir so actually i wanted to ask regarding the third point like refine the mesh uh, like can you tell that what is the meaning of that point refine uh, that means you have to you will start with some mesh and you will do the eigen value analysis modal analysis and you okay. will find out the frequencies natural frequencies and you will have to consider the modes uh, with frequency up to omega f max and then increase the number of elements you know at least uh, uh, double the number of elements are uh, 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 quadruple the number of elements are we increase it to eight times and then again do the eigen value analysis and then make sure that the natural frequencies up, uh, up to omega f max are not changing with further decreasing the element size and whatever uh, whatever mess you get the convergence of natural frequencies up to omega f max so that mess you use for the force response analysis so mess refinement means uh, decreasing the element uh, edge length okay so so like uh, suppose initially there were four modes like uh, which were less than uh, the fourth mode had the frequency which was just less than omega max f yeah uh, but suppose if i refine the mesh then i yeah. may get like six modes maybe seventh mode may be having the uh, frequency which is less than omega max because yeah yeah that also is possible yeah yeah so then will i consider the seventh mode yeah then you have to consider seventh mode and you have to go up to the mesh that these uh, uh, modes do not change and also the corresponding frequencies do not change okay both should not change yeah Okay. Sir. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Then let me start. So today I am going to start a new topic. So that is the finite deformation. Again, I will. You know, we were discussing uh, uh, basically uh, dynamics. again i will go back to equilibrium problems so uh, of course all the pro equilibrium problems we discussed you can always extend it to uh, dynamic problems so today i am going to discuss yeah, okay it's not writing so let me close the file and open it again is the screen visible yes it's visible sir okay so yeah let me so today i'm going to start finite deformation again i will consider equilibrium problem so i will not consider inertia forces of course you can always add that it is straight forward as you have seen uh, in the dynamics problem so either no of course either you can through the uh, hamilton's principle or you can use the uh, principle of virtual work 
and uh, are the weighted residual statement weak form and you can develop the equations for dynamics also in a similar manner so i am going to start today finite uh, deformation problems so uh, here when i am saying finite deformation so what it means is that the displacement gradients are finite they are not infinitesimally small uh, uh, that means the uh, when we look at the gradients like del u by del x and uh, so this is uh, significant del u by del x is uh, del u by del x square is not negligible in comparison to uh, del u by del x so those kind of situations so in the finite deformation again uh, one important thing comes is the how do we describe the problem uh, which is known as the motion description so motion description is uh, you know uh, there are two ways uh, one is known as the lagrangian description of motion another is known as eulerian description of motion lagrangian description of motion so in this what we do uh, in the lagrangian description we basically trace the material points so let us say we have a, a coordinate x you know there is a frame and in the frame there is a coordinate system uh, so capital x i are denoting the coordinates of material points in the reference configuration that is original configuration and small x i are denoting the coordinates of the deformed configuration so this is x1 and these are coordinate axes x2 and small x2 x3 and small x3 and then you have body let us say we have a body and in the body there is a point p and the coordinates of this point p are in the undeformed configuration x2 x x3 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 this is the initial configuration uh, this is also actually referred to as reference configuration and this is at t equal to 0 then now the body deforms and this point p goes to p dash and its coordinates are now in the deformed configuration x1 x2 x3 are the coordinates of the deformed configuration this is known as current configuration and this is at uh, any time t so the point p is going to p dash so here uh, point p we call it as a material point so point uh, p is known as material point uh, yeah so this is known as material point and uh, in the lagr so the main thing is in the lagrangian description of motion we actually trace the material points uh, and no whereas in the other description is alerian description of motion in that we study the material points passing through a fixed set of locations so here rather than that we are tracing the material point so in lagrangian description of motion we you uh, know we trace the material points so we basically uh, uh, monitor where the material points are going so we study all those material points 
and so in this process the variables what are the unknown uh, variables of the problem are there variables are expressed in terms of reference coordinates of the material point and time reference coordinates that means in the reference configuration whatever the coordinate or the you know the material point whatever coordinates it has so be refer uh, you know express the all the variables in terms of those reference coordinates of uh, the uh, of material points and time and time so for example now if we look at the current coordinates so x1 is a current coordinate of material point p that would be expressed as a function of x1 x2 x3 and time t so it would be explicit function of the reference coordinates x1 x2 x3 capital x1 capital x2 capital x3 denote the initial position of the material point and by that the material point is referred so then the current coordinates are uh, expressed as function of x1 x2 x3 and you uh, know time t similarly you know, uh, you know the x2 coordinate would be function of x1 x2 x3 and t x3 uh, coordinate will also be function of x1 x2 x3 and t so uh, if you look at this the small x1 x2 x3 they are the current coordinates of a material point current coordinates of a material point So uh, you know all the variables, you know the stresses, strains, displacements, velocities, everything is expressed in terms of a reference coordinates, capital X1, capital X2, capital X3, and time t. And uh, uh, in solid mechanics, most of the time we use uh, the Lagrangian description of motion, sometimes updated Lagrangian formulation. So in uh, most of the time we uh, take the reference configuration with respect to which we measure the all the quantities. So uh, most of the time we use that and this is known as Lagrangian description but sometimes we use the previous known configuration also as the reference configuration so in that case it is known as update, updated Lagrangian formulation. So uh, in solid mechanics and see uh, for the infinitesimally small deformations uh, no, we do not distinguish the initial and the current configuration, so uh, there is no, uh, no uh, discussion about all that, uh, the Lagrangian description or Eilerian description. This comes uh, into play when we uh, ta, no, deal with finite deformation, large displacements, finite deformation gradients. So in solid mechanics, uh, mostly Lagrangian description of motion is used. So the other description is which we not we do not use in solid mechanics most of the time. And I said uh, either we use the Lagrangian description or updated Lagrangian description. So updated Lagrangian description means reference configuration is the previous known configuration of the body that is used as a reference configuration now the second thing is uh, eulerian description of eulerian description of motion so in this what we uh, do is we study the behavior of material points uh, 
occupying a fixed fixed space so and uh, in this what might so we do not worry about uh, no we do not trace the material points here we just look at you no know, study the uh, behavior of material points which are uh, occupying a fixed space so at different time instances different material points may come in that fixed space so at different time instances different material points may occupy the fixed space and uh, in this because no we are using the uh you uh, know the fixed space so essentially that becomes the current coordinate of whatever material points are there so in this eulerian description of motion variables are expressed in terms of current coordinates and time current coordinates and time so for example now if you look at the velocity field so we'll have let's say velocity along x1 x2 x3 direction so v1 would be expressed in terms of small x1 x2 x3 and t similarly v2 would be expressed in terms of small x1 x2 x3 and t so keep a different uh, i know uh, notice the difference that in the lagrangian description we you know uh, you know describe all the variables with respect to reference uh, coordinates whereas in the alerian description we you know specify the variables as functions of current coordinates so e3 would be again x1 x2 x3 and t so now here if you look at now if we look at the acceleration say a1 so this is uh, you know sir, yeah yes sir as we know the relationship between the reference coordinate system and the current coordinate system we can interchange the both description also if, if it yeah we on. can change the yeah we can uh, interchange we can uh, go from the lagrangian description to alerian description from alerian to lagrangian we can do that also yes but that's more involved so see this acceleration a1 is the total derivative of v1 with respect to dt so this will be written as del because v1 v2 v3 are functions of small x1 x2 and x3 so and x1 x2 x3 the current coordinates because material point is going to uh, occupy a different current uh, locations at different time instances so we need to take the derivative with respect to current coordinates also so we will have del v1 by del x1 and dx1 by dt plus del v1 by del x2 into dx2 by dt plus del v1 by del x3 into dx3 by dt and plus of course we will have del v1 by del t so now dx1 by dt is nothing but actually v1 so this becomes v1 into del v1 by del x1 plus dx2 by dt is v2 so that becomes del v1 by del x2 and similarly dx3 by d3 is v3 so it becomes v3 into del v1 by del x3 plus del v1 by del t so now if you look at these first three terms these three terms these are for these are terms due to Eulerian description of motion. Uh, 
and this part of the acceleration is also known as convective convective acceleration so yeah this is uh, in brief so uh, what we are going to do is subsequently you know maybe because we are going to discuss solid mechanics problem so we will discuss more in terms of uh, lagrangian description of motion and of course you can also use updated lagrangian description or updated lagrangian formulation and most of the time you know in fluid mechanics because you know the um, you know the displacements are quite large it could be order of kilometers and so on depending on the problem so you cannot trace the material points because that would be very difficult so in that case you know the lagrange eilerian description of motion is used wherein to fix a control volume and study the behavior of material points occupying that volume and uh, as i said all different time instances different material points may occupy that uh, control volume if you know the fixed space so in fluid mechanics mostly eilerian description of motion is used so yeah now uh, just with this basic uh, introduction to eilerian description of motion and lagrangian description of motion yeah yes please yeah. so like you said that like in a1 we have first three terms which are due to eilerian description yeah Like, uh, can you tell so now, so now, for example, if it was Lagrangian description, then B one would be function of capital X one, X two, X three, and T, and capital X one, X two, X three do not change the uh, because that's the reference coordinates of a particular material point. So those do not change with time. So you will only have this term in the acceleration, the last term, this term. whereas when we are using eilerian description of motion because the velocity field or the variables are expressed in terms of current coordinates and current coordinates of a material point are going to change with time so uh, that is why you know these terms are coming into picture so, so what is your doubt basically these three are the extra terms means uh, yeah these are the uh, extra terms which we call as convective acceleration terms okay sir otherwise we would have only del v1 by del t yeah only that uh, if it is uh, lagrangian description of motion that is the velocities are uh, specified as function of capital x1 capital x2 and capital x3 and t okay yeah so now uh, let us go to the strain maze. so what are the now when we talk of uh, infinitesimally small deformation so there we do not worry about no what are the Uh, now we just uh, in find uh, corresponding to infinitesimally small displacement gradients we have only one strain uh, uh, no definition but in finite deformation there are uh, different strain definitions i will talk about two such uh, commonly used and of course we mostly use green lagrange strain tensor so subsequently we will work with that so now let me talk of what are known as strain measures so what are the different strain definitions so that is referred to as strain measures so what are the different strain measures so now in this what we are talking about is i am going to introduce the concept of deformation gradient and then the strain uh, green lagrange strain tensor so again when i talk about the strain measure so we will have to take a uh, actually a differential length in the reference configuration and then we have to look at how it is changing in the current configuration so again you have the coordinate axes say the capital x1 is small x1 capital x2 is small x2 capital x3 is small x3 and this is the body in the reference configuration and there are two points uh, separated by a infinitesimally small distance da so that is uh, pq and then now this body changes into uh, into a deformed body at current time so let us say the this point p goes to p dash and q goes to q dash and this length distance between these two points becomes ds dash so this is the you know this is the reference configuration this is 
this is at uh, t equal to 0 we are describe this we are choosing as the uh, the reference for describing the deformation of the body and this is the current configuration at uh, any time t and the body is mapped from the initial undeformed configuration to the current deformed configuration so now here if you look at uh, now if I want to look at the current coordinate x1 so this is going to be function of x1, x2, x3 and t so if I look at the uh, change in the you know if I have a point uh, two points which are separated by distances d capital x1, d capital x2, d capital x3 in the reference configuration so what would be the change in their x coordinate so if I write the x1 now this dx1 is at a particular time instant so the change of time doesn't come into picture so this dx1 would be equal to del x1 it is a function of uh, no x1 and we are talking of two points which are separated by dx1 capital dx1 capital no d capital x2 d capital x3 so this will be equal to dx1 plus rate of change of x1 with respect to x2 into dx2 plus change of x1 with respect to x3 into dx3 this is at a particular time instant so now you know you can say from this that like that you can write for dx2 dx3 similarly so if i want to write dxi where i takes values 1 2 3 so this would be equal to del xi upon del xj in, into dxj so here j is a repeated index so it implies summation over j so that is del xi by del x1 dx1 plus del xi by del x uh, dx del x2 into dx2 plus del xi by del x3 into dx3 so that is what is denoting this at time t so this is at a particular time so dt is not coming into picture dt is zero because we are talking of at the same time instant if there are two points separated by distances that d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 what would be the change in their x coordinate in the current configuration what would be change you know x1 x2 and x3 in the current configuration so now if you put all the three coordinates together that is dx1 dx2 and dx3 so you can write this as now when you know, using this formula you can write you now this as dx1 is we have already written over here and this side i am having d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 so in terms of that we want to write d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 that is change of the current coordinates so that would be given by del x1 by del capital x1 del x1 by del capital x2 del x1 by del capital x3 similarly a del x del small x x2 by del x1 del x2 by del x2 del x2 by del x2 by del x3 and uh, yeah you will also have so del x x3 by del x1 del x3 by del x2 del x3 by del x3 keep please keep a note of uh, know this uh, a small x1 and capital x1 so derivatives are with respect to capital x1 x2 x3 so now this uh, actually you know this quantity is referred to as deformation gradient so we can write this as dx1 dx2 dx3 is equal to this quantity is f into dx1 dx2 dx3 so this is your f and this is f is known as so this matrix what we have got here so this matrix is known as deformation gradient deformation gradient so uh, that f you know this matrix we define it to be we call it as deformation gradient this matrix what we have over here 
so that is known as a deformation gradient now uh, i am slowly moving towards the strain definition so if we look at the square of the distance in the uh, reference configuration so that is the distance between points p and q will be dx1 square plus dx2 square plus dx3 square this is the distance between the points p and q in the reference uh, configuration this can be written as dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose into dx1 dx2 dx3 so uh, is straight forward same thing can be written in this manner so similarly we look at the distance between the points p and q that is p dash and q dash in the uh, deformed configuration so that would be ds dash square that would be in terms of d small x1 d small x2 and d small x3 so that will be this and this can also be written as d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 transpose into d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 so you can write it like this now we have already uh, we know the relationship between uh, that is this relationship if you look at so we can make use of this relationship in describing the ds dash square so you can then write this as dx1 dx2 dx3 is equal to af uh, into K, d uh, capital x etc so you can write this as uh, then dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose into f transpose and then this is uh, dx1 dx2 dx3 is f into uh, d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 so you can write it you uh, know in this manner so now if we look at uh, you know the usual strain definition we talk of change in length per unit original length here we are going to talk about change in the square of distance between uh, p and q so change in the square distance so change in the square of distance between p and q so that we are going to write it as ds dash square minus ds square and this of course ds dash we have already written ds dash square through this relationship so you can write this as dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose into f transpose into f into dx1 dx2 dx3 this we have and minus uh, no, ds square is dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose into dx1 dx2 dx3 so yeah we have uh, these i uh, you know the expressions for this uh, square distance so we can say from this that ds dash is ds dash square minus ds square will be equal to we can take ds uh, dx uh, 1 2 3 transpose on the left hand side so dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose this is taken this side and then you have inside the we have f f transpose into f so we have this f transpose into f minus uh, identity matrix and this side again you have dx1 dx2 dx3 so you can you know write this expression like this now from this square distance formula we define what is known as the green lagrange strain tensor so let us define f transpose into f minus i as uh, twice of this e where e is the green lagrange strain tensor where e is green lagrange
strain tensor and this e is given by so basically if you look at e green lagrange strain tensor that is half of f transpose into f minus i so uh, this is known as no they your e is known as green lagrange strain tensor which is half of f transpose into f minus i so uh, we also have another quantity called right cause green tensor so this f transpose into f is defined as another quantity a uh, tensor second order tensor c and this c is referred to as right cause green tensor so you can see then that e and uh, c can be related so e will be half of c minus uh, i uh, that that that's the relationship between e and c now we want to write uh, this in terms of you know the different components of green lagrange strain tensor in terms of displacement gradients so now uh, we talk of you know the uh, we introduce the displacements so if displacement means the current coordinate xi is written in terms of a reference coordinate xi plus the displacement along xi direction so and of course the displacements are also expressed in terms of the reference coordinates x1 x2 x1 x2 x3 and t in this manner so here where ui is the ui is the uh, displacement of a material point small x i is the current coordinate of the material point and ui is the displacement of the material point uh, along x i direction so ui is the displacement displacement of a material point along x i direction so now if we want to write the components of the deformation gradient in terms of a displacement gradients so we will see that del x1 by del x1 would be equal to because x1 is equal to capital x1 plus u1 so it would be 1 plus del u1 upon del x1 and then del x1 upon del x2 would be equal to uh, del u1 upon del x2 and del x1 upon del x3 will be equal to del u1 upon del x3 so these terms will come similarly uh, del x2 by del x1 will come as del u2 by del x1 del x2 by del x2 will come as 1 plus because you no know, small x2 is capital x2 plus u2 so when you differentiate it with respect to capital x2 you'll get 1 plus del u2 by del x2 and del x2 by del x3 will be equal to del u2 by del x3 so similarly del x3 by del x1 x3 small x3 is equal to capital x3 plus u3 so u3 is a function of x, is capital x1 x2 x3 so del x3 by del x1 and this is at a particular time instant so rate of change with respect to time doesn't come into picture so this will be equal to del u3 by del x1 and del x3 by del x2 would be equal to del u3 by del x2 and del x3 by del x3 will be 1 plus del u3 by del x3 so these will be the uh, you know the components of deformation gradient uh, you know in terms of the displacement gradients so you could uh, you know finally you can say that yeah you no know, the deformation gradient deformation a uh, gradient f will be given by now this uh, whatever we have defined over here so that is 
1 plus del u1 upon del x1, del u1 upon del x2, del u1 upon del x3, del u2 upon del x1, 1 plus del u2 upon del x2, and del u2 upon del x3, then del u3 upon del x1, del u3 upon del x2, 1 plus del u3 upon del x3. So this will be the deformation gradient. In this, what we do, you can see that we have identity matrix. So I and plus uh, the deformation gra displacement gradient H with respect to reference configuration. So this H is known as displacement gradient. Displacement gradient. And you can write now this H where now you can say where this H is nothing but now the uh, all the displacement uh, gradient part in the deformation gradient. So we will have now this as del u1 upon del x1, del u1 upon del x2, del u1 upon del x3, then del u2 upon del x1, del u2 upon del x2, del u2 upon del x3 del u3 upon del x1, del u3 upon del x2, and del u3 upon del x3. So this is known as the displacement gradient. So you can write you know, this as uh, f as i plus h. So now uh, coming back to the green Lagrange strain tensor, we want to write it in terms of the uh, basically displacement gradient. So if you substitute here, so we know that uh, E is nothing but E is equal to half of F transpose into F minus I. And if you substitute the values, now you know that uh, F is I plus H. So if you put these values and simplify, so you will get the components of Green Lagrange strain tensor. So uh, now if you look at the 1 1 component, so E 1 1 would be equal to del u1 upon del x1 uh, you are getting from this this expression so e11 would be del u1 upon del x1 plus half of then you have del u1 upon del x1 whole square plus plus we will have uh, del uh, uh, yeah del u2 upon del x1 whole square plus del u3 upon del x1 whole square. So now if you see in case of infinitesimally small displacement gradients, these terms are negligible. So we do not consider but in finite deformation we consider this. And now you see the strain displacement relations are nonlinear. So the geometric nonlinearity comes into picture. So this is what we are referred to as geometric nonlinearity. So similarly from this uh, half of f transpose f minus i, you can get all the components. So for example, E22 would be del U2 upon del X2 plus half of, then we will have del U1 upon del X2 whole square plus del U2 upon del X2 whole square plus del U3 upon del X2 whole square. So same way now you can write the uh, E33 also in a similar manner. You can actually derive from this and you can write that. And uh, so the shear, if you look at the, these are the tensorial component of uh, shear strain. So you will have here half. So similarly, you will find that E12 will come out as del U1 upon del X2 plus del U2 upon del X1 and then plus half of you will have over here del u1 upon del x1, del u1 upon del x2, plus del u2 upon del x1, del u2 upon del x2, plus del u3 upon del x1, del u3 upon del x2. So, and like that, no, you can write uh, e23, you will get in a similar manner, and e31 also, all the tensorial com uh, components of basically shear strain. So now, uh, so this is a green Lagrange strain tensor. 
and you will see here that green lagrange tensor has got the linear terms as you see this terms and these set up terms that's all it is not like you no know, it is kind of some taylor series expansion no green lagrange strain strain tensor has got linear term and quadratic terms that's all these are the only terms so this is a complete uh, term of green lagrange strain tensor there is no truncation in the series or anything like that by definition this is the complete green lagrange strain tensor having linear terms and quadratic terms so uh, you now similarly uh, if you want to look at the uh, definition interpretation of uh, the strain uh, uh, components so we have something known as the interpretation of components of e interpretation of and of course some of you who would have done continuum mechanics uh, interpretation of components of uh, green lagrange strain tensor e so for example i know for interpreting e11 so what i was saying is that of course some of you who would have done continuum mechanics so you might have actually already done this so it's kind of repetition so e11 for interpreting e11 let us take uh, a line element which is originally pq is parallel to capital x1 axis that is along x1 direction so we take dx1 not equal to 0 but we take dx2 equal to 0 and dx3 equal to 0 so we take this uh, this means you know what i am saying is line element parallel to x1 x axis line element in the reference configuration line element in the reference configuration is parallel to x1 axis so in the in this case if you look at this ds dash square minus ds square you will find that this will come out as uh, basically uh, i know you can see that del x1 upon del capital x1 whole square plus del x2 upon del capital x1 whole square plus del x3 upon del capital x1 whole square into d x1 square minus d x1 square yeah because ds is nothing but d ds square is nothing but d x1 square and ds dash square is basically the first term what i have written over here so now if you look at uh, this whole thing you know this term is twice of the green green lag i know if we divide it by dx11 square so whatever we get that is twice of the green lagrange strain tensor so from this you can say that e11 is equal to ds square minus ds square ds dash square minus ds square upon 2 of actually no uh, ds square so this is e11 so now what it is rather than change in length it is actually change in squared length so ds dash square minus ds square upon uh, twice of ds square for ds is nothing but for ds is nothing but dx1 so you can say the uh, normal green lagrange strain e11 is normal green lagrange strain e11 is equal to change in the squared length divided by twice into original squared length in the undeformed configuration what i am saying original so that is how you define now you can interpret the uh, normal component of green lagrange strain tensor e11 uh, i am not discussing the interpretation of uh, uh, shear strain component but similar kind of a thing now you take a line element parallel to x1 and x2 axis and then look at the change in angle so it would be cosine of change in the angle so cosine or sine 
so i don't remember exactly so but it would be in terms of that so similarly you can interpret now let me i may, may introduce the another strain measure in lrn description of motion green lagrange strain tensor is the strain tensor used in uh, uh, lagrangian description of motion so similarly we have what is known as the strain measure in lrn description of motion so for this what we do uh, is again you uh, know be rather than writing as i said now we have to write the current uh, reference coordinates in terms of basically the current coordinates so what you do is again you have the uh, you know the reference frame and in that the coordinate axis is embedded so you have capital x1 small x1 capital x2 small x2 capital x3 small x3 and then you have this body in the reference configuration and there are two points p and q distance between them is ds at t equal to 0 in the reference configuration and then you have the deformed body and then we have the point p ds and q ds and the distance is ds ds this is at any time t so now here you have the current coordinate say xi and uh, the reference coordinates are now expressed in terms of uh, current coordinates so you will have x1 x2 x3 and t so now since here we are uh, no, we are looking at the material points occupying the current coordinates so we take kind of known current coordinates as known quantities and the reference coordinates as unknown quantities so that is why we are expressing the uh this uh, reference reference coordinates capital xi as a function of x1 x small x1 x2 x3 and t so now if you look at the distances so ds dash square distance in the uh, deformed configuration would be uh, basically you know dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose into dx1 dx2 and dx3 so this is your ds dash and uh, now if you want to look at the uh, uh, ds so ds of course is going to be dx1 dx2 dx3 we have already written transpose into dx1 dx2 dx3 please make a note of you know the change in the capital x and small x quantities what i am writing here so now in the uh, you know eilerian description of motion what we do we as i said the right Uh, reference coordinates in terms of current coordinates so we look at the uh, change of uh, reference coordinates we express it in terms of change in the uh, current coordinates so uh, the way we wrote earlier to define the displacement gradient so we define what is known as inverse deformation gradient so for for that purpose we write dx1 dx2 dx3 in terms of so i think let me write this in the next page so b write dx1 dx2 dx3 now b because these are expressed as a function of small x1 x2 x3 so we write del capital x1 upon del x1 del capital x1 upon del x2 del capital x1 upon del x3 similarly del capital x2 upon del x1 del capital x2 upon del x2 del capital x2 upon del x3 del capital x3 upon del x1 del capital x3 upon del x2 del capital x3 upon del x3 in two we write in terms of d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 so actually you know this quantity what we have got here we call it as g so this quantity is g and in two of course you here you have got dx1 dx2 and dx3 so g is uh, referred to as inverse deformation gradient because uh, uh, inverse deformation gradient 
and this g uh, no if you write no you can say small d x1 small i uh, know small d uh, is d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 from this relationship we can write in terms of d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 so that would be this g inverse and that is nothing but actually f so you can say that g is nothing but f inverse so inverse deformation gradient is inverse of uh, this deformation gradient f now if you look at the uh, distances so now if you look at the uh, now the change in the square distances so you can write uh, c ds dash square minus ds square will be written as ds dash square is already d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 transpose into d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 so this is the current uh, squared length minus uh, reference squared length so that is d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 transpose into d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 so you can write it like this now you can uh, we have in the alarian description of motion we have expressed d capital x1 d capital x2 d capital x3 in terms of d small x1 x2 x3 so you can actually rewrite this as ds dash square minus ds square is equal to you can take this dx1 dx2 dx3 transpose as common on this side and then here you will have i and then minus you will have this g transpose into g and then this side you will have d small x1 d small x2 d small x3 so you will have this now the way we define green lagrange strain tensor so we define here similarly we define uh Euler, uh almansi strain tensor small e as half of i minus g transpose into g uh, that can also be written as half of i minus f inverse transpose into f inverse and this e is uh, referred to as we call it as Eulerian almansi strain tensor so uh, now if you look at uh, I know you want to write it in terms of displacement gradients with respect to current coordinates. So you will have the reference coordinate xi would be equal to current coordinate minus displacement uh, ui. But in the Lagrange uh, Lagrangian description of motion, this is expressed in terms of small x1, small x2, small x3, and t. So you write it like this. So now uh, you have uh, you can write the for expression for g in terms of uh, gradients of this ui where i is taking values 1 2 3 over here so you can write uh, a g in terms of basically del u1 by del small x1 and so on and then you substitute in this formula and after substituting you now if you look at the expressions so i will just write uh, a typical expression for e11 so that would be del u1 upon del x1 now these derivatives are here with respect with respect to current coordinate minus we will get see earlier we got plus here we will get minus and then we will have del u1 upon small x1 whole square plus del u2 upon del small x1 whole square plus del u3 upon del small x1 whole square so this will be e11 same way you can write e22 and e33 so similarly if you look at e12 so e12 would be half of del u1 by del x2 plus del u2 by del small x1 plus minus half and then you have del u1 upon del x1 del u1 upon del x2 plus del u2 upon del x1 del u2 upon del x2 plus del u3 upon del x1 
del u3 upon del x2 so yeah the the so similarly you know you can write the other terms so you can write e23 in a similar manner and e31 also in a similar manner so this uh, you know the strain definition given by this is known as the Eilerian Almansi strain tensor the way we have defined here so you know it is actually written in terms of this g as you have seen over here now if the displacement gradients are small so the quadratic terms would be negligible these terms would be negligible and then you will see the current there would be uh, you know hardly any difference between the current and reference coordinates so for the small displacement gradient case you will see that green lagrange strain tensor and the uh, uh, no Eilerian Almansi strain tensors would be identical so they they would be identical yeah so i think uh, this is where i want to stop today and so main important thing for the solid mechanics problems is that we have now for the finite deformation case main take away is that for the finite deformation case we have this definition of green lagrange strain tensor which has quadratic terms so th those are nonlinear terms nonlinear strain displacement relation and this nonlinearity is known as geometric nonlinearity so that has to be accounted for in the finite element formulation so i think this is where i want to stop now if you have any questions and doubts now you can ask next class i will be talking about uh, different stress measures we use in finite deformation like Cauchy stress, first Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor, and second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. So, I would be talking about this in the next class. Now, if you have any questions and doubts, you can ask. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, can I, actually, I would... can I ask? Yeah, yeah. So uh, in the assignment three, actually, I want to ask one question that uh, we are using the explicit uh, Euler technique, which you taught after the written mapping approach uh, okay. to solve the problem. But the results are diverging a lot. Like uh, like we are solving for load steps. So when it goes into the plastic region, so yeah, yes. when it is going in the plastic region, you have to actually divide uh, I know each step into a, that is smaller sub uh, sub steps. Yes, sir. We are doing that. Uh, the force. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. The strain increment we are dividing further into the small steps. Uh, then also, like we divided into, I think, twenty steps or something. Uh, uh, then also the results are diverging. They are not converging. Diverging in the sense that uh, what so is that, happening? So the delta u, uh, the stress is also diverge, delta u is diverging because of the stress is diverging basically. The stress we calculated using that explicit technique, uh, the delta st uh, that stress goes into 10 to the power 30 to 35 order. I think there must be something wrong in your calculations. You have to check that. There must be something wrong. It cannot go like that. Uh, sir, one thing here I want to ask, uh, when you taught that explicit technique, you said the yeah. the initial condition for that would be the load, uh, the the values from the last load step. Uh, yeah. But before going, before going into this new load step, we are computing the beta and from that we are computing the sigma dash nu. So that, yeah. so th so that will be my, uh, the, uh, the initial condition for this, uh, explicit technique so am i correct here uh, yeah you have to so suppose when you are having transition from elastic to elastoplastic so you are saying you are calculating that beta and then whatever one minus beta times delta epsilon you are getting that you are dividing into a number of sub steps and using yes, the explicit approach is that what you are doing yes sir so for that for the first sub step of that Whatever stress you have uh, due to that uh, beta into delta epsilon strain, because of that, whatever stresses are coming, those stresses yes. you will use to compute the quantities further. Yes, sir. We are doing that only. No, but you have to check. Okay. There must some. There must be something actually wrong because it cannot diverge okay. so much. There can be some deviation, but so much of uh, divergence is uh, is should not happen. Okay, sir. We'll look into yeah. it. Then.
Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody, any other question? Uh, yes, sir. I have a doubt from the today's lecture. Yeah, uh, tell me. Yeah, sir. Like uh, capital E, like it is defined as uh, half of f transpose f minus i. Yeah. So, sir, like, what is the physics or motivation behind uh, defining f transpose f minus i is equal to e? Because, uh, like, its physical interpretation is also not like something like change in length on initial length. Yeah. It's so, well, for small deformation, but not for yeah. much. So uh, the motivation comes from actually when I talk about, so I will introduce the correspond, uh, no stress measures. And then when we write the virtual work of stresses, so we need to look for the conjugate pairs of stress and strain. So if you look at the uh, Cauchy uh, stress tensor, uh, that, that is conjugate with the infinitesimally small actually displacement gradient strains or you can say the uh, it is uh, conjugate to uh, you know displacement gradients alone whereas when we consider the say green lagrange strain tensor so to calculate the virtual work or the strain energy we need uh, to use with these green lagrange strain tensor we'll have to use second piola kirchhoff stress tensor so these definitions are uh, you know, given such a way that we have conjugate pairs of stress and strain definition, which give the, uh, you know, the incremental strain energy or the virtual work of stresses. So the origin, I mean, basis for this is this de these definitions is the expression for virtual work or incremental strain energy. Okay, so sir, when you say conjugate, like, what is the meaning of that? That means when we multiply the components of stress and corresponding strain, we get the strain energy or work, virtual work of stresses. So that is what I mean by saying conjugate. Okay, so that energy is same, but like for different type yeah. of stress. Yeah, so for different type of stress, to get the same energy, you'll have to use different types of strains. Okay. So when we def after the definitions of stress measures, different stress measures, I just said, Cauchy stress, first PLA kirchhoff stress tensor, second PLA kirchhoff stress tensor, we will also see the expression for virtual work of stresses. So the Cauchy, uh, you know, Cauchy stress tensor is conjugate to basically you can say the uh, displacement gradients alone, uh, or you can say infinitesimally small strain uh, components. And uh, whereas the first PLA Kirchhoff stress tensor is gradient uh, is conjugate to uh, displacement gradient uh, defined with respect to uh, reference configuration, and the second PLA Kirchhoff stress tensor is conjugate to Green Lagrange strain tensor. So that is where the need for defining that kind of a strain comes. So when we have second PLA Kirchhoff stress tensor, uh, the corresponding strain which gives the same virtual work of stresses are same strain energy you have to use this green lagrange strain tensor okay sir can you tell the same for that valerian almansi strain tensor sir yeah we actually don't use that so as i said no in the solid mechanics problems we use uh, you know the lagrangian description of motion or updated lagrangian description of motion so we use only this green lagrange strain tensor so although we have defined but it is not used and in fluid mechanics also it is not used because in fluid mechanics you use the relationship between the uh, stress and uh, uh, this you know the velocity gradient tensor so again the Euler and Muncy strain tensor is actually that is not used although it is defined but not used okay yeah any other question anybody So if there are no question, I am stopping. Thank you all for your attention.